um, my understanding of identity is who I identify myself as and that is who I believe I am as an individual and as a person and where I find my identity from the main place I'd find my identity from is God's word and who God calls me to be and the kind of person God says that I am what I believe identity to be is that like distinct characteristic or personality in any person or group of people uh, it's a combination of how you grew up, your friends, the people you spend all your time around, and who God has put you on this earth to be. And I believe that the best place to find your identity is in daily life, because that's the only place you'll be put through different situations in school, in your work life, uh, maybe just walking on the road, and you'll be able to truly find out how you would react to certain situations or deal with them. My understanding of identity is basically who I am, how I live my life, and how I perceive myself. And where I find my identity mainly is the Bible, the Word of God, who He says I am and who He says I am to be. And then also from the way I was raised, from, yeah. So uh, what I understand from identity is basically um, the definition of who I am, um, my personal traits and my personal characters. Uh, I, I believe how I get my identity is from what basically the Word of God says. It says that I am um, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a peculiar person. So I know that I am a child of God. I'm not supposed to be like any other person. I'm not supposed to be or try to be like someone who is out there. I have to be who I am. And he says that I am loved, I'm, 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 I'm cherished. So. I basically take the word of God as being my identity and that is where basically I originate my, 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 my personal identity. So basically that is what I understand from identity and that is where my origin of identity is from the word of God. Um, where I find my identity I'd say um, in two things. I find obviously I find my identity in Christ and I also uh, find my identity in who I am to uh, those around me. I am a I am a son, I am a brother, I am a friend, and that's where I find my identity. Identity is uh, a specific characteristic that excludes me from everyone else. Uh, it's a theory behind we are the same but not the same. So the, the part that's not the same is me having a specific characteristic that only I can, or only I normally give out. Then the most ideal place I find my identity is uh, a church where I get to learn more about Christ and get to do the things that he desires and go through that footpath so that I am able to draw more souls closer to him. Yeah. I know that he who promised is faithful. And welcome now, welcome to our conversation, World Changers. So good to have you here. We are excited that you're joining us today. We hope you're having a great time so far. Welcome to our conversation. Listen, on stage right now, I'm joined with two amazing people. One of them, you know, actually both of them, you've seen them before. We're going to get to meet them and get to know who they are. But before that, hey, grab your Bible, grab your notebook, because we are about to learn from the Word of God, the most important word we'll ever hear. Great, thank you, Pascal. We had such a great time in the last sermon series. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. Amazing, the life of Jesus. Yeah. What stood out for you? It was really just talking about the fact that Jesus was, for me, one of the, the sermons was about following his heart for community. Yeah. It's practical. Right. I remember one point that I think Favor actually shared. It was, you know, respecting the law. I was like, what? How does yeah. that reflect the life of Jesus? It was an amazing one. If you missed any of them, I want to encourage you, go to our YouTube channel, the Watoto Church YouTube page, and look for the HYD playlist. You're going to be blessed. Great, man. Jesus is the best example we can ever follow. If you're watching, remember HYD is a special service here at Watoto Church where we engage with you, encourage you from the Word of God and empower you to be a world changer in your community for Jesus Christ. My name is Zen. 
My name is Favor. And my name is Pascal. And today, <laughs> drum roll, we are starting a brand new sermon series. It's going to be now. absolutely beautiful. And the title is quite interesting. Transform, not Transformers. <laughs> you know, before, before Pascal was telling us about Transformers, did you watch all of them? No. All <laughs> unfinished. All of them unfinished them. I'm the old man out. I've not watched any of them. Right. <laughs> I'm telling you, you should go back yeah. and watch the Transformers. It's quite very interesting it, it always got me really really scared because it's just one of those movies that is uh, anyway we are not talking about transformers we are going to be talking about transformed it is our new summon series and basically in this summon series we want to make sure that we communicate gender identity and our faith with jesus that's basically what we're going to be talking about and um to just start us off Imagine you guys are on a reality TV show, and this one is a survival uh, thing altogether. This is a survival game. Okay, so the first scenario is there is a huge island, and there is a treasure hidden right in the middle of that island. And um, all you have is your toothbrush, is your backpack, and maybe a bun and some water. Listen, uh, would you survive? No, I wouldn't. Let me go first. I would not. I would not. I'll probably just play my joker or something and ask, please get me out of here. It would be tough, really, to think about it. It would be really tough. Hey, come on, imagine this treasure is amazing. You probably wouldn't even try. Man. <laughs> it would be tough. It would be tough. It would be tough. Favor. It just sounds like suffering, honestly. <laughs> Imagine if we know how big the island is, what is the middle? Right. Right, so it yeah. sounds tough. Well, we are going to basically let you know what the treasure is, and maybe Pascal will give it a try to make sure that he gets it. But this Salmon series, Transformed, is going to be such a blessing. Doesn't matter what you believe, doesn't matter who you are and what you have allowed social media or your friends to say about your gender, this is a sermon series that I believe is going to transform your life. Today, we're going to be talking about our faith in Jesus. Now, of course, as we get into the sermon series, we will talk about a bit of our gender identity, but today we're going to be talking about our faith. Pascal, how long have you been following Jesus and how has that affected you uh it's been it's been 10 years 10 years i believe following jesus and it's been a roller coaster i oh. I, I remember at some point i heard about jesus yeah. and then it was actually through a friend and invited me and i got to discover it's a long story but i got to become to come closer to who yeah. jesus is and discover who he is and who he wants me to be yeah. so it's been a journey not always highs but sometimes highs yeah. and lows yeah so it's, it's been interesting a roller coaster i would say favor i have to agree with pascal when it says it's a roller coaster yeah. but for me i think i have followed jesus for about 11 years i thought you were going to say forever <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i think about 11 years right and i gave my life to christ when i was 11 years old and man honestly it is worth it i don't know where i would be if it wasn't for Jesus. So by the end of this sermon series, number one, you're going to understand that Jesus is calling you to be a lifelong student. Yes, yes. And another thing that we're going to be making sure that we bring out through scripture for you to understand is that being a student of Jesus is not that easy. It's like yeah. that course you're probably doing or planning to do, you're going to fail sometimes. sometimes That's right. Sometimes are going to be hard. Yeah. But the good thing with Jesus, if we sit at his feet and are willing to learn, he's yeah. always going to be there. Yeah, we're going to be Amen. and grow. Amen. I think also uh, we're talking about following Jesus, but yeah. the question is where are we following him to? Yeah. So we're also going to talk about how Jesus is leading us, his students, to a priceless treasure. That priceless treasure, hopefully, again, <laughs> Pascal will want to get it <laughs> because he gave up even before he tried. <laughs> well, this is another scenario. Now, imagine you're still going to the same island and the difference is this time you have a guide and they are going to tell you how you can survive in the wild they're going to walk with you. They're going to probably feed you. Uh, if you get tired, they're probably going to carry you. But they're going to walk with you. That's more, that's more like it. <laughs> that's more like that's it. More like it. That's Better more like deal. it. <laughs> Better deal. Now, of course, even for you guys who are watching, you probably would go for show number two. Yeah. 
Show number two. And let me tell you something. Jesus is the treasure. He is the treasure. He is the one that is leading us to finding our identity. You see, our Sermon series is transformed, but we actually hashtagged it, finding your identity. And finding your identity does not mean that somebody comes and whispers in your ears and tells you who you are. Mm -hmm. No, you read the Bible and God himself tells you who you are because he created you. Yeah. Now, of course, let's dive into it. Yeah. We're going to be talking about Peter. Peter is one of the best. Um, okay, I like this guy because he kind of has a very interesting yeah. personality. Yeah. And we're going to be reading from Mark chapter 1, 16 to 18. Of course, um, it's up on the screen. If you can open your Bible, get your notebook and write that. Of course, Jesus is going through the Sea of Galilee and he finds Simon and his brother Andrew. Yeah. Tells them, drop that fake job and follow me. Of course, a fake job. Okay, if you're a fisherman, I'm sorry. But these days, by the way, being a fisherman is cool. It's bougie. Yeah, do you own a net? <laughs> a fishing <laughs> wire? <laughs> by the way, they are very expensive. But, I mean, of course, Simon Peter leaves his job to follow Jesus. Guys, how easy would that be in this day and age? I mean, somebody comes to you while you're busy doing whatever you're doing and tells you, dude, I have something hot for you follow me i think it would be hard yeah but you know one thing that i absolutely love about their attitude the bible says that they drop everything at once yes and follow jesus yeah there was that willingness on the inside of them yeah but, but to answer the question pastors and it, it wouldn't be easy to just no. say drop your career yeah drop, you know that dream that you're chasing or that yeah. plan that you have yeah to fully follow jesus mm -hmm. wouldn't be easy but definitely for us to be transformed pascal that's yeah. what you're saying you're saying we need to drop everything yes. and follow jesus yes. and of course as we get into really discussing gender identity one of the things that we need to surrender to god is who we are Come on. True. because god has created us i don't want to get into the other seven series but i'm <laughs> excited about it because that is what i believe i believe that the devil is attacking our gender yeah. Many young people can wake up in the morning and feel like they are not yeah. man enough. Yeah. Many girls wake up and they say, man, I feel like I want to be like a dude. Yeah. And uh, let me just say this. God is actually telling us from his word that for you to be transformed, you've got to drop your human views yes. and focus on him and follow him. Just like what Simon and Andrew did. Yeah. And of course, I mean, uh, I can only imagine those days, of course, uh, Jesus was a rabbi. Of course, he had students who were disciples. And it's true, man, he was competent and he was a man of truth. And that is why probably Simon and Andrew just dropped everything and they followed Jesus. What I want to say to you in this first point is that Jesus is calling you to sit at his feet. I mean, you said that. Jesus is calling you to be committed to his word. Jesus is calling you to focus on him. Yeah. Do not be swayed up and down. Yeah. The world is so loud, but listen, God's word is louder and it is more effective. You might be going through some lows and some highs. As we will see, Peter honestly went through some lows. Yeah. And Pascal, yeah. you know, you talked about the fact that, you know, it's not easy it as a follower of it Jesus. It isn't. It's difficult. It's difficult. And that leads us to our second point really, yeah. as we learn, mm -hmm. which is the fact that when, when we choose to follow Jesus, yeah. it's going to be hard. And sometimes yeah. we will fail. Yeah. Uh, but And still, from the life of Peter that we are learning yeah. from uh, in the book of Mark, Mark mm -hmm. chapter 8, I believe. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mark chapter 8, there's a scenario. And, and remember, by the way, these disciples had been walking with Jesus. Yeah. You know, and from the moment that Jesus calls uh, uh, Peter, three yeah. years, you know, they walked together yes. for three years. Yeah. They are seeing Jesus perform miracles. Mm -hmm. I mean, in Mark chapter 1 and, and chapter 2, if you read it, you see, they've seen Jesus multiply the bread, the seven yeah. loaves and the five loaves. They've seen all these things. You would think to yourself, man, they, they had all reason to believe and say, you know what, everything mm. he says is true. In fact, they, they, they would not be found, found with any doubt in their hearts. But right. guess what? They failed. Yeah. Yeah. One instance, 
Jesus asked them a question. You know, they, they withdrew to some place and, and Jesus is now telling Peter and, and, and I mean telling the disciples about what is to come and what it means for him to be actually called the Messiah, that he would have to be betrayed and he would have to lay down his life. And Peter pulled him to the side and asked him, what are you talking about? And in fact, the Bible says he pulled him to the side to rebuke him. Yeah. But guess what? Jesus tells him, get behind me. Satan. He rebuked him. And if, if you were, you know, in school, that would have been equal to like an F9. Uh, or the teacher would probably write, see, see me. See me after class. That was hard, man. He that, <laughs> see, but he was with Jesus. Yes. He was with him, but, but mm -hmm. he failed at that point. But Jesus, one of the things I discovered, Pastor Zen, while yeah. reading that scripture, yeah. is that the Bible says that he actually turned and giving his back to mm -hmm. Peter, looking at the other disciples, he rebuked him. He was a teacher at heart, and he wanted them to learn the true meaning of what it meant to be a disciple, mm. what it meant to actually learn from him. Right. Yeah. I mean, Jesus' identity was uh, being debated, mm -hmm. yeah. and it's true, man. Uh, give it up for, I mean, Simon, because he said, you're the Messiah, but he did not understand the cost <laughs> yeah. of yeah. being a Messiah. And uh, Jesus tries to help him to understand that, man, you know, the Messiah is not just somebody who is going to come and fight for you because the Romans are ruthless. The Messiah is somebody that has come because he loves you. He has to die. And he's going to resurrect on the third day. Yeah. And Peter was like, well, that is not the Messiah I know. And, and, and you know what comes to my mind yeah, yeah. Then, um, is that following Jesus, mm. I, I mean, you'll have to sacrifice. You have to make sacrifices like we've right, just true. learned. Drop yeah. everything you're learning. But right. also, yeah. like you were just talking about it right now. We will have to change the way we view life. Right. Romans 12, 2, uh, you know, a scripture we all know says, you know what, do not conform to the patterns, patterns. of this be world, but be transformed. Yeah. This the, the series, the title yeah. of our series, be yeah. transformed by the renewing of your mind. So yeah. one of the things that makes this journey with Jesus hard but worthwhile is that we'll have to change the way we look at life. Mm. Our worldview, our life view has mm. to be has to change yeah. Yeah. and be adjusted to that, the, uh, to the one of Jesus. Yeah. Like Peter had to yeah, yeah. realize, hold on, being a Messiah is actually laying down yeah, your yeah. life. Yeah, yeah. But mm. the encouraging thing is this, while we do that, while we are going through confusion and going through times when we are debating who we ought to be in the world and Instagram is telling you this is who you are and TikTok is suggesting this and your friends at school are telling you this or that, just be, be reassured that Jesus is with you. He's going to guide you through that confusion to clarity only if you allow yourself to be a student but also if you allow yourself to learn from him even when it's hard and stay at his feet. Definitely. For us to be transformed, it's going to cost us. We're going to go through some hardship. We're going to go through some difficulty. But just like what Pascal is saying, and pretty much what Peter is actually getting us to understand that, man, if you're struggling with your identity, struggle with Jesus. If you're struggling with your self-esteem, struggle with Jesus. That's basically what we're saying. Peter was in a safe space with the Messiah, with Jesus. And of course, from his failure, Jesus built something. Yeah. He built something and, uh, you know, he, he told the men, guys, in, uh, in, 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 in Mark 8, uh, all the way 34 to 36, he tells them, guys, you know, for, for, you've got to, to let go of certain things. Your viewpoint doesn't matter. Uh, what I'm asking you to do is to follow me and take my lead. Yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, it's true. We're going to go through whatever we're going to go through, but Jesus is leading us to something yeah. precious. Yeah. A precious treasure, guys. Precious treasure. I think I think you when someone says follow me, you're thinking, and I go where with you. Right. Like where am I going? Why yes. are you taking me? Yeah. But this is a thing when you follow Jesus. Jesus is leading his students to a priceless treasure. Yeah. Yes, priceless yes. treasure. Come yes. on. I know when you think about that, you're thinking, okay, priceless. Uh, what kind? What what really can yep. be priceless? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to read for us from Come First on. Peter chapter yes. one, verse three to nine. Mm -hmm. When he now realizes what it means to be a Messiah and what the it meant to follow. He had Jesus. seen the resurrected mm -hmm. Jesus. Now he understands. This guy was leading churches in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. He now gets it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he, he writes all praise to God, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. It mm -hmm. is by his great mercy that uh -huh. we have been born again yeah. because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Mm -hmm. Now we live with great expectation yeah. and we have a priceless inheritance, yeah. an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, yes. pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of mm -hmm. change and decay. Mm -hmm. Someone just stop there for a minute. Mm -hmm. Beyond... beyond 
it cannot decay you guys mm-hmm. can you imagine that yeah. a gift that cannot decay yeah. they and grow old it's yeah. a gift gift it's a gift your bag it can grow old yeah, yeah. <laughs> but this yeah, is not that this one will never decay, decay. Yeah, it it's something to look forward to yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah so this is a priceless gift we're talking about yeah, yeah. about freedom yeah, yeah we're talking about long life long eternal life, life. <laughs> Exactly. So this is when we follow Jesus. This mm-hmm. is a priceless gift we yeah, are yeah. talking about. Definitely. We are we are in this world but we are not of this world. True. And uh, I mean considering the fact that we are talking about gender identity, Pascal. Mm-hmm. I can only imagine somebody, a young person who is watching and they're saying, "You guys don't understand. You don't understand. It's true. I know heaven exists and I believe that there is this life." that God gives to me but I am stuck. Mm. I don't think I can make it mm-hmm. because um this has gone on for a very long time. <sighs> um and I can only imagine what this person is going through. Yeah. Uh favor. What can you encourage a young person out there to do? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Seek Jesus but not on your own. Come on. Yeah, do life with somebody. Do life with someone, fellowship with people who are like-minded, yeah. who are yes. seeking yeah. Christ. Yes. It's difficult alone, just like Pascal said. Yes. You need to have fellowship. Yes. And read the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> Follow Jesus. That's very key. That's very mm. important. Yeah. Feed on his word. Yes. Pascal. Yeah, if there's one thing that I've learned from our short conversation here is this. Jesus wants the best for us. Yeah. He wants the best for you. Yeah. And and I know we've been talking about, you know, really being transformed and what the word of God, what Jesus has to say about our sexuality and our and our gender identity. Mm-hmm. And today like we've spoken, we are establishing the fact that there's nowhere else we're going to find truth about who we truly are, that mm-hmm. precious treasure except in Jesus. Yeah. So you have to be willing and that's what I'm picking. What right. I would encourage you to do is this. Be willing to learn and struggle like like Pastor Zen said, struggle with Jesus. Do everything you can but fall forward into his hands. And over time he will definitely transform you into what he desires for you to become. You see when a car gets messed up on the road, you don't rush it to a doctor. You rush it to a mechanic. Why? Because they understand the makings of that car when we are broken when we are questioning who we are and it's true the world is honestly very very loud i mean god created human beings but human beings have decided to redesign what god already designed don't fall for that don't fall for that this is what we're saying today we're saying that follow jesus and not just follow be committed to following Jesus. If you have fallen, it's okay. Jesus is gracious. He is very merciful. He's not going to let you down. And if that's you and honestly you have fallen back and you don't think that you can be redeemed, I have good news for you. He can redeem you. He can set you free if only you could say yes to him. A simple way we like to say it is just tell him man Jesus, can you be my best friend? Because I know when you're talking to your best friends, you tell them absolutely everything. And so I want you where you are, I want to pray for you and I want to pray with you, but also if you're another person and you like to accept Jesus in your heart, meaning you want to follow Jesus. We like to sing a song, I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. The Bible actually he says when you decide to follow Jesus listen the old is gone you become a new creature a new person so i want to pray for you right now father i want to say thank you so much for each and every young person who is watching today Lord, as you're telling us in this sermon series that we honestly are going to be transformed if we leave everything and follow you. Today we decide to follow you. For some of us, oh God, that are struggling, and it's true sometimes being a Christian and following Jesus is really difficult. People laugh at us. And sometimes we're sinful, we fall. But Lord, you have told us be of good cheer i have overcome the world so jesus i pray for every young person who has decided to follow jesus but it's been difficult i pray lord that you hold them by the hand and you will help them to walk again lord i thank you so much for that person that is saying today i decide to follow jesus i pray right now in the name of jesus that you or oh god will take hold of their heart 
and walk with them and lead them, oh God, because they are saying, be my Lord and Savior. And Lord, I thank you so much for their lives because heaven celebrates because they have made the decision today. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. We pray and everybody said, Amen. Amen. Well, if you made the decision, heaven celebrates because of that. We want to celebrate you. And I have a great team here that would love to connect with you. Please call the number below or email moff.connect at watotochurch.com. Come. Absolutely. Listen, we've had such a great time here in our conversation. If the conversation we had raised some question in your mind, get in touch with us. Send us a DM on our Instagram at Watoto Morph and follow us on our TikTok as well. Coming up next is CIA. Guess who's going to be roasted today? Pastor Zen. Let's go. Hi, everyone. My name is Josef Kiriza and I'm a Mofa. I was a church in Tebe. And my burning question to you guys is as teenagers, should we date at this age? Thank you, Josiah, for that question. Is it okay for a teenager to debt at this time? Well, I would say, honestly, as a teenager, you have a lot going on. You have school, you have family to juggle, you have friends, and you're looking ahead and saying, man, I want to become this. Well, I would say, how can you balance all that? Ecclesiastes 1.11 says, there is time for everything. And so I believe when you understand the season that you are in, then you're able to make a decision like that. I want to give you an, a scenario and an example. When I was 12 years old, I would go back home with my mom, but this time I decided to take my own course. I decided to just go, but listen, I got lost and a stranger found me and took me back to my mom. Now I had an idea, but I couldn't do it as a 12 year old at that time. So Jago, see what's on your plate and make the decision. God bless you.